Hey there, folks. How are you all doing? It's Tori Favreau from the Amazing Brick Network. I hope that you're all well. I am so excited for what we're about to get into here. It's our first interview with my dear friend and also an amazing creator. Maria, how are you? Hi, Tori. I'm fine. How are you? I am so excited for this, Maria. I, as I said off camera before, we've been friends and talking for so long, and I've always been such a fan of everything that you've been building, and to actually be speaking to you now, wonderful. So, folks, in case you don't know, I'm in Geelong, Victoria, Australia, and Maria, of course, is in Athens, Greece. Hello from Greece. Wonderful. Now, Maria, if you don't mind, before we get started, Introduce yourself to everyone and uh, how you got into Lego, please. Okay. Um, it's not a very long story. Um, uh, I am Maria, uh, a.k.a. Mind the Brick. Uh, <laughs> uh, it all started when I was a child. Uh, I, didn't, I did not have my own Lego, uh, but uh, I had a couple of friends who did. So I went to their place and we, we played and we, we mocked, um, and then the Dark Ages came. Yes, <laughs> all the Dark Ages. <laughs> and a couple of years ago, um, we got back together, and one of them, one of my friends, had bought uh, the bucket wheel, the Technique set. Yes. So yes. it was Christmas. We had dinner, and we sat down and started making that huge Technique set, and it. It just started from there. I started buying sets again. And uh, about a year ago, I think, I started designing my own mocks, um, mainly for myself. And then a friend said, oh, why don't you um, put them on, on Lego Ideas? So I did. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you did. Um, one of the things that... Uh, caught my eyes your absolute attention to detail um your builds that you did i mean one of the first ones that really caught my eye was the water mill and um i just fell in love with it folks if you have not seen the water mill here it is right now um, i'll pop it in the screen there for you to have a look at and don't forget folks with all of these beautiful wonderful people like maria here um you can follow them on Lego Ideas. You can support their ideas uh, by using their online name for Lego Ideas, in which case Maria is Mind the Brick, of course. And um, give them all your support. Now, if you were to see some of the things that I get to see behind the scenes as they're getting ready, my goodness gracious me, so much work goes into these. And Maria, um, I... I've looked at many of your designs and I was absolutely gobsmacked with the water mill. You even made postcards for Lego, which we have put on the show yeah. before. They were beautiful. Thank you for sharing them with the group. And it was just utterly wonderful. Now, when take us through the design process, if you will. Like what comes into your head? Is there any pen and paper involved? Do you develop things in like studio or uh, another program? Please talk us through it. Okay, um, I have a thing about Japan to start with. Yes. And I've yes. made a couple of, uh, other um, mocks which are based on Japanese architecture and buildings and stuff like that. Um, so during the process, I was going through the Lego Ideas sets and uh, other people's mocks and stuff like that. Um, I realized that there are no uh, water mills, no beautiful water mills. Um, so I, I did the research and uh, I, ba I based my water mill on several Japanese water mills. Um, then uh, after gathering all the, the pictures, so yes. I started um, designing. It was a, a huge, long process <laughs> uh, because I wanted my water mill to work, which was <laughs> yeah, which, was, a lot of work. which was a lot of work and a lot of things were changing all the time and the scale was changing and the bricks were changing um, and now I'm in the process of gathering bricks to make it in, in, in real life, a real life model so I'm very, yes. very excited yes. about that. 
it's it's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Um, and I do love the fact that you do draw so much inspiration from Japanese culture. And isn't it funny, folks, like, you know, Maria does such accurate representations. There must be a lot of study and research done. But for a non-Asian person to be recreating these beautiful Japanese pieces of architecture, it truly shows the love and attention that you have for the culture and the way that they did things back then. It's, it's something that uh, has grown inside me for years. It's not something new. Um, I'm a jewelry designer. That's what I've studied. So maybe that's how the, the attention to detail, that's where it comes from, that Absolutely. you mentioned Absolutely. earlier. Um, so it's, it's not something new to me, the, the love for Japanese uh, culture, uh, but it's a new way to... Um, to present it in a way through my through my ideas and my mocks and designs. Yes, I, one thing I will say is that you do not see you see a lot of mocks and a lot of different sort of uh, buildings being done by people, but uh, your builds are accurate. Um, it's a real blessing to see them, and I do Thanks, love the sir. fact that um, you know it's not some over stylized imaginary build it's like if you do if you're fortunate enough like after i saw some of your builds i started looking up this style of architecture and you've nailed it like you have <laughs> nailed it i Thank cannot you. believe how good they are Thank now, you, my friend. you are so so welcome thank you is more to the point and so if you don't mind a lady does not have to disclose her age but how old are you uh, I'm 40, to be 41. You do not look it. So you could have said anything <laughs> then. So um, for me, like, I think we, most of us did go through our dark age, like you referred to. It's when, you know, life and you're growing up. And I remember I'm 48. And as I keep saying on the show, I'm a man child. But um, <laughs> basically, I remember my very first Lego sets were, uh, the classic space like um it's probably not a good way to do it but like the tattoo on my forearm is actually of oh it's all lego okay. on, my, on my tattoos um so yeah those sleeves i probably don't show them off on the show but they are it's you should, lego you should take pictures of them <laughs> I'm afraid so we can see them <laughs> maybe one day actually <laughs> that might be a thing down the track we can do a show about yeah. people's lego tattoos um yes. but uh for me it was in and it was in 1978. I was given my first classic space set and I still, still have all those figures. And I had the original like Lego system castle figures as well. And then time went on and I had, and it was, went from sets and you throw it all into the big bucket of Lego and then you do your own mocks, but you're a child and you don't realize that like it's my own creation. It's just, yes, oh, I, I am making Lego. Sorry. Um, I wish I had the imagination I I had I used to have as a child. I mean, we we used to make amazing stuff that I I can't I can't even think of of them right now. You know, I can't even make something like that. <laughs> I think it's funny because we're more prepared to accept compromise when we're younger. So it's like you bang two sets of wheels onto a, a you know an eight by two, and you're like, yeah, that's a car. I've made a car. <laughs> um, but, so we, you said a couple of years ago you caught up with these same friends again, which I think is beautiful that you've had such long friendships with these people. But um, to pull the old Lego bucket back out again yeah. and then do what you're doing now, wow. So when did you find when you came back out of um, those the dark ages? And for those of you who aren't aware of what that is, because, you know, we, we make the assumption as fans of Lego that uh, – if you are into Lego, you'll just know what all the terms and the acronyms are. So the Dark Ages, folks, is basically that period in time when you start to grow up a little bit and um, you decide that you're not going to play with toys for a while. Uh, and that's a sad old time, but, uh, yeah, it, it, that is referred to the Dark Ages. So when did you come out of your Dark Age? Uh, it was uh, three or four years ago, I think. Wow, so only recently. Yes. <laughs> and, and the uh, things you're doing now, you are so accomplished. And I know I'm heaping praise on, but it's deserved 
the things Thank that you, make Tim. it actually exquisite. And when you mentioned the jewellery, that makes perfect sense because you've I got such a does. fine eye for detail, you make beautiful things. Like, so I don't know, at some stage, maybe we should look at some of the jewellery that you've designed because that would be out of this world. You know, one one day I thought of making uh, pieces from from Lego, but that idea hasn't hasn't really grown in me yet. Yes. But I, I'm still thinking about it. Not actual pieces that you know you can wear and go out. I, I want to make something more. So I'm giving it time in my in my head to to you know to become something to course, to take a form. So maybe that's something that I will do in a couple of years from now. I cannot wait. But in the meantime, please keep doing what you're doing. Now, out of all the things that you've made, Maria, um, do you have any personal favourites? Uh, the water mill, as you said. Yes. Um, yes. One of my favourite favorite builds, it's um, Mine the Brick, which is actually a train station where a crazy red brick it's a huge brick that uh, i have transformed into a train arrives and everybody's like scared and you know panicking and what is going on and it's all set on uh, on a platform based on um, uh, london underground yes which is part of me as well because that's where i studied jewelry i okay. spent three okay. three years there so um you know it's most of my most of my mocks have stories and memories and things like that inside. Yes. So yeah, yes. that's that's another build that I really enjoyed and had fun making. I have not seen that one, so please make sure that you, if you've got a picture, I would love yeah, to see I do. it, <laughs> and I will include it at this point here. Um, okay. It, I, I just uh, I am absolutely flabbergasted. I my love for Lego is so intense, like it does. It almost consumes me, and um, but I I do have a confession to make. I okay. am Please. not at all creative when it comes to. I can't see. I don't know why. I cannot see how the bricks fall in my head. So I do have a large collection, but in terms of play, I get a lot of rewarding and good feelings inside from doing that. But the things you make are works of art. And I look at them and I look at some of the builds that people are doing and I'm like, how does your brain even work to be able to make those sorts of things? Um, it's such but a place of creativity. The same thing um, applies to me as well. I look at other people's stuff and I'm, I'm like, wow, how did they make that? How did they come up with it? How did that, that idea, you know, came in their head and... What bricks did they use? And uh, sometimes I think we all do it. We, we study each other's, you know, uh, uh, mocks and, and things like that because there are techniques that we learn every day. And if if you're not aware of them, you can make you can't make something, you know. Yes. And yes. that's what I like when I when I build new Lego sets that. Uh, I go through their instructions and I'm like, oh yeah, that that thing, uh, you know, that technique, I can use it to to change mine and make something better. And you know, it's it's exciting. Absolutely, <laughs> the whole creative process. Now, speaking of creative processes, and one thing I did love with the watermill, and I know we keep going back there, but I do adore <laughs> it so much. Um, was you made the watermill, and um, I have played the video before that uh, on the show, folks. You would have to go back quite a lot of episodes now, but um, Maria got assistance from someone else in actually motorizing the watermill. How did that come about? Um, I uh, I have a friend who is um, a technique um, lover, <laughs> if yes. you can call yes. it that. Uh, so. I asked him for his help and he gave it to me. Um, when when I, I'm going back to the dark ages again, when I started uh, playing with Lego again and, and buying sets and making them, um, I started buying technique, technique sets. Um, so I, re I, really, I, I really love the way uh, techniques are made and how they work and how if you if you use a certain code and you add it to another code, 
things will turn and you know give it power functions as well so i just asked my friend and he helped me out and uh, he made a little model of of, of the um engine i don't know how to call it no, no. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, so my next step is to actually get get all the bricks and make it and you know get a video of, of it working uh, I, I, I can't wait for that <laughs> but it's a, it's, it's a long process to gather all the bricks that you need i can only so, imagine that because like i said um i i have my own like loose lego but most of my things now it's a long story and i'm not going to bore people i lost most of my lego collection in a flood and oh. um I, yeah it was heartbreaking sorry so <laughs> most of my sets now are sets they're yeah. things i've purchased i haven't uh gone and rebought a lot of loose bricks but uh i can only imagine like you build something and then you have to find from a digital file those actual physical bricks to uh to make what it is that you've got up here yeah. and put it there. And, and it's an expensive sport as well. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious me. Yes, it is. Now, something exciting um, that I would love for you to show, if you don't mind, you've got a work in progress. And um, I, I do, if folks have been watching recently, Maria's been taking part in the Lego Ideas Challenges and uh, she did a beautiful uh, uh, nine and three quarter station. She recently did some fantastic work for the the Star Wars promotion that was going on as well. But you're building something else. Do you want to talk us through it and show us where you're at at the moment? Yeah. Um, this is a train station. Uh, I've actually, I don't know. It, That's fine, that, we can see it. Okay. Um, it's actually based on a train station that uh, I've designed in a bigger scale. And now I'm trying to make it, you know, with with real bricks. So it had to it had to shrink down <laughs> a little bit. Yes. And um, I'm, I'm actually want to add it to my Lego Winter Village. So it's going to have a lot of snow yes. and it's going to be really nice and you know uh, maybe add some lights and things like that so yeah that's what i'm working currently i think and, that looks amazing. you can even see the snow capping along the rails yeah. it's so cute i love it and last night i i posted some renderings and some photos in a group and some people gave me feedback of what to change because i'm having doubts so that's really nice as well you know to be able to to talk with other people and, to, and change it, um, not collaborate, but, you know, uh, Get they give you ideas, you give them back and... Absolutely. And I, one, one of the things I did notice, and that's why I think the internet is so fantastic, because it does bring us together. And the fact that you've been able to put something out there and people are so helpful and thoughtful with their ideas and, and they just share them. It's um, yeah. It's a really healthy fantastic place to share that knowledge and to get knowledge so that's fantastic when do you envisage us being able to see a more complete version of what you're doing i think um you know this week i'm gonna finish with the designing uh because I've, i went back to studio you know the, it's a process of you know putting bricks together and then going back to studio and then changing things you know it's 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 a, it's a work in progress so I think that um, next week I'll I'll order I'll, uh, sorry I'll order okay. some parts from Brickery and hopefully by the end of the month or beginning of December I'll have it ready for Christmas. <laughs> that is so <laughs> wonderful. Have you ever considered like I know you do a lot of stuff for Lego Ideas, but have you ever um, just in case people do want something, have you ever posted instructions to some of your more elaborate sets that people could either purchase them or find them somewhere online? Um, I've started making instructions for smaller little builds that I've made and um, I share them for free. Um, to make instructions for bigger set, sets, it's it's really hard. You know, people think that, you know, you just push a button and the instructions are ready. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> you, have, you have to redesign your whole 
idea and you know follow proper steps and stuff like that so i haven't i've given thought to that but i haven't decided to do it because it firstly takes a lot of time and then i don't know it's a bit funny if if i decide to make instructions i think i'll share them for free and and not go through the the whole pain um you know platforms and um I don't want to name platforms. That's okay. Um, that's okay. Yeah, um, but I think that's that's what I will do. I'll, I will share them for free. That's really beautiful, and I I appreciate the fact that that's the way you'd like to go. But I really, yeah. what I really hope is that we get to buy a box one day, and your smiling face is inside as the fan <laughs> creator of it. Well, I, I leave the Lego Idea Group to decide if. If I make something and they think it's worthwhile, you know, let them decide to make it into a set. It's it's a it's a huge process to make, you know, instructions and then get the bricks together and you know make a box and sell the whole thing. And with the whole, I don't know how to call it, the piracy from um, from companies from the Asian continent yes so there's sort of like lord voldemort those brands that shall not be named yeah exactly um you know it's it's a tough deal it's a tough deal for that's why i'm thinking of just sharing them for free and not going through the whole pain i mean sorry i'm mumbling <laughs> Cut no, this I, I do understand what you're saying it's like a gift that you want to give as opposed to going the other route and monetizing it, for example. Um, one of the things that uh, Maria is referring to, folks, as well, is unfortunately on the internet there are a lot of people, talented people, artists like Maria, who make these beautiful things and they share them with the world. And it's almost clever and scary at the same time, but there are companies that are not Lego and they figure out how people like Maria made their their art and they reverse engineer it. And next thing you know, you may see a beautiful watermill being made by a non-Lego branded company and Maria never sees a cent or is even acknowledged. It's absolutely criminal. So that's what she's referring to there. And, um, you know, we have to support these wonderful people like Maria and on these platforms like Lego Ideas, they're trying to do the right thing. They're creating something that is beautiful and unique, and we don't want to see it just taken and and pirate the idea pirated or, or stolen. So uh, yeah, that I that I do I do feel your pain absolutely. So if 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 we start selling them, you know, who is going to steal them if you if you can get them for free? Yes. You know, <laughs> that's that's it. how I think about it. It's such a good way of thinking about it too. Now, Maria, thank you so very much. We have taken up so much of your time and I know you're extremely busy. Um, I just, firstly, thank you so much for being our first person interviewed on the Amazing Brick Network. Uh, it's an absolute joy and a pleasure to see what you have to make. You probably have to get that at some point. <laughs> yeah, we we'll later. Sorry about that. That's okay. It's different parts of the world. It's like 10.30 <laughs> at night for me and it's, what is it, one thirty in the afternoon for you? Yeah, At exactly. least we're sharing the same day. Um, <laughs> no, thank you so much. You are an absolute treasure to the group and to anyone who is a fan of Lego. Um, <laughs> please support Maria. Look up Lego Ideas ID, Mind the Brick, and um, I just cannot wait to see what you come up with next. Thank you so very much for being a part of the Amazing Brick Network today. I would like to thank you as well, Tori. This is my first interview and I was a bit, you know, nervous and but you made me relaxed. So I can't wait to see it and to see all the amazing uh, videos that you make uh, on, on YouTube. I, I, I cannot <laughs> wait for people just to hear your voice and see the face behind so many beautiful builds. So we'll wrap it up for now. Thank you so very okay. much. And I cannot wait to see what you do next. Thank you, Tori. Have a, have a good night. <laughs> Thank you.